What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. We are on a new project and we are doing the biggest deck that we have ever done. We've got some really incredible details. We've got a balcony. We've got almost 1500 square feet of surface. Make sure you hit subscribe. Stay tuned. Let's go. All right, we have everything demoed. We have our lumber back here. We're finally ready to start actually building, and that starts with installing the Glidetech helical piles, but I need to do the layout, the mark out for them of our locations. We have 23 piles going in here. I think it's the most we've ever done. One little thing that we need to be very careful of right off the bat. We have in this house a septic system. So we have the septic system marked out on the survey. We know exactly where that's at, but finished basement we can't see exactly where the sewer line is coming out of the house and going towards the septic tank it's pretty close so we need to make sure that we don't hit that sewer line as we're installing our helical pile so uh, even though it's a finished basement I spent some time inside also looked at the vents coming out of the house determined 99% certainty we believe it's coming right out of here and shooting towards the septic tank so I'm gonna spray out this line and just have that as a guide and we're gonna make sure that our footings are, you know, not right on top of that. So I'm gonna do that first and we have a little bit of wiggle room with our footings because we're not at our max span. So if we have to adjust some things, we can. Lean on my hose, I'm gonna hit you. Is that where it's at? Yeah. Okay. Down at the line, I almost ran into. Yeah, we would have, we would have maybe figured out. We would have had a problem. That's all I'd say. We got a problem. We would have maybe got an answer to that age-old question: What happens when an unstoppable force hits an immovable object? Yep. Science. Isaac Newton be rolling in his grave. <laughs> I saw my arm pretty good yesterday. See that? It's from carrying. Bang! Kevin did that yesterday too. Why? Well, 19. Yeah, pretty much right, right on your cord. And I can't spray that. So. Can't move the cord. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll go eight foot off of this. And then just split the difference here? Yeah. <laughs> Rocking out with my Crocs out. <laughs> I, don't, I just don't understand why you can't. Because the only thing I'm worried about now is like, if this does... Sure, if it goes this way or that way, we don't know. Yeah, well like now it's directly in line if it does come straight off I, the I house. Got that. So... Because like this is like sort of the gray area yeah. here. Like it could potentially come out right there. I don't think so, but over look, here... If I'm on your crosshair right now, yep. we're seven foot two. Seven foot two is right here. Let go of it, please. Thank you. Here, let's uh. Seven foot eight. No, hold on. Hey! Come on, dude. In this area, we have just a 14 by 14 area. So it's like the smallest portion of the deck, but it's gonna be a double decker balcony deck going in and there's going to be in the future, potentially a hot tub here. There's not gonna be one installed now, but maybe next year down the line, it needs to be built to accommodate one if they decide to get one. So 14 by 14 area, we have, what do we have, 12 piles here? 12 piles underneath a 14 by 14 deck. You could put the world's biggest hot tub on this thing and then probably a tank on top of it and it's not gonna go nowhere. Twenty three. There you go. Now 
now they're gonna start installing the piles over here we have this long run about 58 feet of one beam and then we have these three footings for a kitchen that bumps out so we're gonna have them start over there do all of these first so that we can start framing behind them because they'll be over in this area for quite a while doing all 12 of those but while they're over there we'll be framing over here that is the beauty of helical piles Let's take a second to talk about the design of this project. Our biggest challenge in the design phase was figuring out how we can make this as functional as possible without wasting a lot of space and having all of the doors of the house exit out onto the deck. That made our minimum size pretty large on this, so we wanted to make sure that each area had a certain function. We have a big lounge entertainment area on the right side, we have a dining area on the left, and then we have a really cool hot tub area with a balcony above it off the master bedroom. This is gonna create a dry space underneath, so you can sit in that hot tub or have a couple chairs there and chill out during a rainstorm. And the centerpiece to this whole design is our outdoor kitchen with the two staircases flanking it on both sides, leading down to our patio, finishing it all off with landscaping. This one is going to be a killer project, so stay tuned, can't wait to show it to you. So, uh, we've got a decent amount of this framing up. We've run into our first little issue that we need to figure out. We've got a lot of different things happening. We have doors everywhere on the back of this house. We need to be seven eighths below them so that our decking goes flush up to the door. So. We have to be like somewhere in the middle of framing everything dead level and everything being off of a number on the laser and going with the existing house. So these doors might be off a tiny bit. We need to figure that out because right now, biggest thing we have is this is sitting level. We've obviously got this gap right here. Everything else around it is reading good. This is reading good. That beam's reading good. All these beams are reading good. But uh, I think what we have is these two center beams are just kicked up a little high on this side. We can bring those down and uh, hopefully we're good. The most important thing is that seven ace off of the door. That's what we really need to go off of. We can't change that. So sometimes you need to play with some of the stuff to make it work, but uh, I think we're getting pretty close here. We'll, we'll get it figured out. I'm here and uh, good thing we got the Glide Tech helical piles with the adjustable head because uh, there's a couple spins and, and we're good. All right, hold on. Dude, it's three guys building this 700 square foot deck. Yeah, I mean, you're ready to run Joyce. Kind of. Oh, okay. Perfect. You got the right man on the job. Where's my belt? Where'd you guys put? Where'd you leave it? Yeah. Why aren't you wearing it? It's gotta be up on a, is it a tree? Oh, there it is. 
You think we really would? You put your oh, oh, I get it. Oh, okay. That looks awesome. That's really cool. So wait, you guys don't need me. No. Oh, okay. Perfect. Nope. What did the termite say when he walked into the bar? This is bartender here. Get it? Bartender. This man they wood. Eat wood. Why is why is your nose? Why isn't your nose 12 inches long? Is that gonna be a foot? Yeah. It'd be a foot, not a nose. <laughs> what the blind porcupine say to the cactus? Yeah. Is that you, mommy? Oh, I get it. Finishing up the rims? Yeah, I got some more rims to do. Yeah. Yeah. Put them near your arm. Which one? I don't know. What happened to yours? Oh, that's a horse in the sun. Yeah. Pretty good yesterday. See that? It's from Harry. Bang! <laughs> we came a little bit uh, a little bit too far here. We have a six foot wide set of stairs. Um, we have this deck coming out an extra, what was it, 26 inches? 26 inches. 26 inches as opposed to that one over there, but we want the stairs to start at the same depth that that deck is because we have this set of stairs on both sides of the kitchen. We want that to look nice and even, but we want to extend this out a little bit further because that is going to accommodate our bar seating. So uh, we're going to take this off, extend this past. We got to reconfigure some stuff, a little miscommunication, not a big problem, but uh, Tom, you got it? It's under control. Sweet. Because Ant's not here this week. Not here. Ant is away on vacation, but we're going to make him proud, I hope. Me Talk to me. <laughs> What's up? Right. I'm going to tighten up this deck here. We got Jose working on mid span blocking, so I'm going to wait to plane until he's got that in so everything's stiffened up a little bit and uh, should be good to go. Good. I'm getting ready to cut our last section of deck joists here. The one thing to uh, be concerned about is we have a balcony going up top here. We have a six by six that's gonna need to bear on top of this beam. So I want the same distance off both sides so everything's even. We have two and a half inches to the start here. So our post is gonna be set back two and a half inches from the inside of our rim. I want the same thing over here. So I've measured out two and a half inches. That'll be my cut. And now what I'll do is measure full distance from this rim to here and do the same thing over there. I'll snap a line. Everything is gonna look nice and tight and planned out. That's what we want. Oh no. Oh no. So close. You know, it's on the back of the ledger. Good there? Thank you. It's always a little uh, a little confusing when you're when you're splitting on a beam, you have some of them slapped next to each other over there. We had to kind of continue our layout. So we noticed that we jumped on here, do mid-span blocking. Something doesn't look right. And it was just one bay here. I'll show you. On the other end of the deck. We're continuing 12 inches on center. Somehow, for some reason, we have jumped to the other side of the line. You can see 
that whole layout here. My joist is supposed to start here and go that way. So it's an inch and a half off. Not a huge deal, but that's why Ant would say, mark both sides of your layout. All right, we'll pop this off, we'll move it, and uh, we should be good. I'm just gonna cut these away from the uh, rim. About eight of these need to be moved over an inch and a half. Not the end of the world, we'll get it. You just decided to cut the one nut off. <laughs> well, I wasn't sure uh, uh, about the uh, distance. Okay, I get it. All right. Got everything straightened up. A little hiccup, but uh, we figured it out. So always, everything's always an inch and a half off. If it's off, it's always off an inch and a half. It means somebody went on the wrong side of the line. So future reference, we do two marks. Both sides of the joist. Don't look at me. <laughs> well, I'm looking at you. All right. We'll let Jose finish up this mid-span blocking and then, uh, then I'll jump on some planing, get this thing flat, and I'll show you some tips for that. Yeah! It would've been better if I wasn't wearing noise-canceling headphones. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's gonna be it for this vlog. In the next one, we're gonna show you some of the details like planing down our joists to get a nice level surface and also framing up a balcony off of the master bedroom. Uh, it's one of the first times we've done that, so it's gonna be pretty interesting. We've got some cool details, so make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned, and until next time, this has been Premier Outdoor Living. You're really bothering <laughs> me too. Did you see me over there? Yeah, I hear you, man. You breathe so heavy. Really? Yeah. It's hot. yeah. When you get around me, you start breathing like a <sighs> like a pig waiting for dinner. Sleep apnea. <laughs>